Hi everybody, uh, we are back at Hida-san's office here in Tokyo and uh, today we're actually going to talk a little bit about the design of the letter cutter and how that whole project came together. So I am joined today by Mr. Naihida himself. Welcome back. And for the first time on the Army TV, my very good friend, Elliot Hammer. Hello. Um, so Elliot is, uh, I don't know what the hell your position is anymore. Elliot's like the communications graphics photography man for the Armory. Um, so all the website graphics, all of our kind of visual standards, as well as actually our labels inside our garments. <laughs> like you put those together. And then the thing that you and I have been up to for the last couple of years um, is making watches mm -hmm. as like a little part-time job that we do, yeah. right? Part-time, full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> part-time, full-time yeah. job. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, let's, let's, let's jump into this thing. Um, God, where do we start actually? You know, it's, this, well, please go ahead. It's been a long journey. I mean, it's been kind of two years in the making, right? And it has, yeah. Yeah, the relationship with um, Hida San has developed quite a long way. Mm. Actually, when we have a first trunk show in Hong Kong, mm. we already started discussing about our, this project. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And we had to do this remotely. We did everything like yeah. over email and over Zoom calls and mm -hmm. whatnot. And the letter cutter didn't even start life like as the letter cutter. We started with other, we were looking actually more at the type one and what yeah. we could do with the type one. And we made a lot of but kind why of- Why oh, you please. choose type two, not the one, type one and not type three? <laughs> you know, honestly, selfishly, it's because I always wanted to buy a type two. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting, thank you. Yeah, it's, I actually feel like it's a, it's a style of watch that, like a configuration of watch that you don't see that often. Mm -hmm. Like it's not that common to see a nicely sized um, center seconds, slightly sporty, but quite sort of fine design watch. It's you know? also manual winding. It's mm -hmm. also manual winding. Yeah. Yes. You know, I mean, the only one I can immediately think of in that, in that bracket is like the Patek 570, mm -hmm. you know, otherwise you're going down to more like tool watches, right? Like military watches. Mm -hmm. And actually oftentimes the military watches mm -hmm. would be automatic mm -hmm. or quartz mm -hmm. as well. Um, so selfishly, I always wanted to do a Type 2. I think you always had a thing for the Type 2 as well. Yeah, I really loved it. I mean, I, I think the whole range is fantastic together and they're very complementary, but the Type 2 always spoke to me. The simplicity and the sort of the geometry in, yeah. the, in the font. Geometry is a good word for it, actually, yeah. Because, you know, with the center seconds, like it's symmetrical and then having like those different levels mm -hmm. where you have like the track yeah. and then the recessed bit in the center. Yeah. Um, and the three-dimensionality three dimensionality of the hands as well. Yes, I think exactly. Of all the range are really great, but I love the, uh, the stick hands. We've, we've got so much shape to yes. them as well. It's really special. Yeah. I, I still don't think I've seen a hand like that because the hands are not stamped, they're milled. And so it yes. really is like yeah. a cylinder. Yeah. And this is the thing, like when you look at it in a photograph, you're not seeing it in movement, so you never see the way the light plays mm -hmm. on a cylinder. Mm -hmm. But when you have it on your wrist and you move around, you're like, oh, hmm, that's kind of interesting. So anyway, um, you know, I think a good way to segue into how the letter cutter came about is mm -hmm. why hand engraving for Nayahita watches? I think that's a great question. Mm -hmm. uh, when I saw a hand engraving index in a historical time pieces mm -hmm. in a Switzerland is uh, around uh, 1996 or 1997 mm -hmm. in a uh, watch museum in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Uh, I immediately fascinated after I saw the vintage pocket watches and the chronometers mm. because uh, they are all handled by skilled craftsmen mm. and uh, colored by a vintage enamel. Mm. It looks so three-dimensional and mm. beautiful, mm. but uh, this technique almost gone yeah. because uh, modern watches, it's a uh, index is made by a star, printed mm. or something uh, upright. Yeah. I want to recreate this kind of 
hand uh, craft technique into mm. release watches, a yeah. smaller one. Yeah. I know it's not easy, yeah. but uh, I have a uh, lucky enough to have a uh, work with uh, Kano-san. Kano -san oh, standing over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and uh, I asked him, uh, could you engraving a uh, hand engraving index mm. even with a watch, this watch size? Mm. He said, yes, it's possible. Mm. This is our, uh, why I love hand engraving the mm. indexes for our researches. Mm. Like I always had a lot of respect for the hand engraved indexes ever since like the type one. And this was maybe a little bit of an oversight on me and Elliot's part. Because when we made the, the version of the, like when we made the design that preceded the letter cutter, mm. we used these really, really fine numerals that once we actually engraved it, we were like, oh, this is a bit pointless. <laughs> you know, like, we should, like this is not a good use of the skill that is available to us. So Elliot, like, what did you do? What, like, where do we go next with the font? Well, uh, after the very fine beginning, we kind of realized that there was something really special about the lacquer and how the lacquer can sit in a like a concave yeah. placement because yeah. it's, it starts off as a liquid before it's cured and dries. Yeah. Um, and so we really want to show that off because as, next to the hands as well, the hands curve over, yes. yeah. the, the lacquer mm -hmm. curves mm -hmm. inwards. Yeah. So it's a really nice combination mm -hmm. of two different uh, surfaces that catch the light in a really mm -hmm. fantastic way. Yeah. So the thin numerals just didn't really do that. So yeah. we wanted to make something really big and chunky. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the type two, we really loved the, the design of it and the numerals and all the forms within the watch. But we wanted to do something different. And Mark and I went through 50, 100 different yeah. designs and iterations <laughs> yeah, <for real>. <laughs> <laughs> that just didn't work out at yeah. all because it, it's really hard. Because I think one great thing about your watch or all your watches is there, there is some decoration, but it's kind of minimal and it's super simple and particularly in the Type 2. Mm -hmm. It's a very kind of, it's a very modern in that, uh, mm -hmm. in that respect. Yeah. And so Mark and I went away and we were talking about different things to do. And I have a history in typography mm -hmm. and graphic design. So I was looking at um, like different processes and I've always been really interested in uh, stone mm -hmm. and like letter cutting at like a bigger architectural mm -hmm. kind of scale. Mm -hmm. And um, and that's done with a chisel directly into the stone and creates a, like a V-shaped kind of wedge. Mm -hmm. And that really reminded me of the hand engraving because mm. you're creating a, it's a subtractive process. Mm. You're making that shape. And so with that, we, um, we kind of then took the next step and we were looking at architecture, particularly around New York, which is where I live. And Mark spends a lot of his time. Mm. And there's so much Art Deco architecture. It's, mm -hmm. it's the best place in the world to see Art Deco architecture. So I spent a lot of time walking around the streets and, and mm. looking, for, looking for ideas there. And I think we've found something that kind of references that, but also is a bit more, you were just saying earlier before we started recording, the, the Type 1 is kind of a, in, inspired by the 20s and 30s. Yep. Mm. And then the Type 2 is more kind of 50s and 60s. 60s exactly. Mm. And I think that is where we kind of went with the, with the font. And it was, we were trying to make it slightly more modern, and, but still using those geometric forms, which mm. is a fantastic element of the yeah. Art Deco period. Mm. I mean, I think this is the difference between like typography and letter cutting. Because typography, you think about it in two dimensions, but letter cutting, you think about the third dimension because mm. you can vary mm. how deeply you go down into it. And you know, like, um, so Hida-san's watchmaker, Fuji-san, who's also over there, um, when Fuji-san fills the numerals with lacquer, it's not like a lake and you fill the water up and it's just a, a flat level, yeah. right? Like the way Fuji-san does it, it's more like a coating. Like, so it actually helps to highlight the trough rather mm. than like flatten it out, which I think is super interesting and actually leaves very room, very little room for error <laughs> for Kano-san as yeah. well. Um, one, one thing that I really noticed when we were doing this collaboration, right, was uh, we rejected stuff because we're like, oh, this is not as good as a you know, watch, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Like that was a big thing. Like we were mm -hmm. like, oh man, this, this variation is kind of cool. And it's like, if it was just something we were going to release on our own, we'd be like, yeah, okay, it's probably passable, right? But because it had to also have Hida-san's name on it, we definitely took, I think, a lot of extra care mm -hmm. in like getting it to a certain level where it could be a peer to Hida-san's collection. Yeah. You know? And what that meant was that we had to dismantle 
abstractly, in, in a design sense, we had to dismantle the design, break down Hida-san's designs, and reconstruct it. Mm. Because it's not the sort of thing where you change just one little bit and like you're done, right? Like Hida-san's designs are very, very delicately balanced and everything is somewhere and in a certain way for a very clear reason. And the minute you start to mess with it, you realize, yeah. oh man, me doing that just broke three other things in terms of like balance or color mm. or shape or whatever, you know. The simplest things are the hardest to yeah. design. Yeah, and for real. Yeah. Seriously. This was a very humbling process. Yeah, <laughs> um, what did you think of the what did you think of the design when you when we finally gave you the somewhat final design? What did you think of it? When I saw uh, your drawing first time, I'm surprised because I never imagined such a design by myself. I think this is a very good reason why we are collaborating mm. is to create the new watches. Mm. Yeah. I'm very happy to see because uh, it's a very unique, mm. very strong, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, you creating a very new style with uh, my, our uh, tone and manner. Mm. Mm. I think uh, this is a good collaboration and uh, I think it's a lot of uh, new people, a new customer mm. to bring uh, mm. our attention for our watches. Well, that's great. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I remember when I first held uh, the piece in my hand, which mm -hmm. was like a few weeks ago, I was like, wow, it, it turned out actually probably better than I expected. <laughs> because Very Elliot and I look at everything in basically in Photoshop. We look mm -hmm. at everything two-dimensionally. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So when we finally see the three-dimensional object, we're like, oh, wow. And actually, that was also the first time that I got to see Hida-san's new case. So third generation case. Exactly, yeah, the yeah. third generation screwback case. Because you told me about it before, so yeah, I knew it was going to be yeah. a screwback. But I didn't realize how much of an effect you switching to a screwback would also have on things like the lugs, on the profile. Yeah. Um, anyway, I was just like overjoyed to, to get this piece, you know, after two years of work, yeah. when your baby finally arrives, you're like, oh, that's amazing. Ellie, what did you think when you first saw it? Because you were the last to see it too. Yeah, <laughs> Because I kept while. forgetting to bring the watch out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I only saw it uh, less than two weeks ago, I suppose, in its final form, because, I mean, like you're saying, it was a, it was a pandemic baby. It was, it's, been, <laughs> it's been worked on from across uh, different continents. And, um, and yeah, I, I mean, it was fantastic. I love the previous case designs yeah. and all the elements that went into that. Um, but yeah, I think the refinements to this just, uh, I mean, as, as someone who's working, as Mark was saying, on watches in a very like kind of two dimensional thought process, um, I really appreciate your three dimensional approach to the Thank case you. design and mm. all the different elements that go into that process. Mm. Yeah. I have a lot of respect for that. And, and it, yeah, it was just blew me away. I was like, wow, perfect. And yeah. I'd like to add one thing. Uh, one of my dreams is creating some double-signed watches mm. with a respected retailer. Yeah, <laughs> all, uh, I think uh, this time we discuss about the position, mm -hmm. where we yeah. should we put the yeah. armory name on the dial. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we, are, we did a lot of fine change, mm. fine adjustment of yeah. the position. And uh, I'm very honored to see the, your armory name on the uh, dial. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you to say so. Pretty sure. Also, I really like, I mean, I don't think every watch looks good, co-signed, but I think this one, because it's a geometric yeah. font, it kind of, it's all the geometry, it kind of balances it out. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a very like measured yeah. use of the design. It's a very like type nerd. Oh yeah, type nerd. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. a type yeah. nerd's watch, really. Yeah. <laughs> We definitely yeah. had a few like yeah. type nerds message us, <laughs> tell us yeah. how much they like it, you know, which is good. Like that's that's what I want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Um, anything else to add? I think that's about it, right? I think maybe like the only other thing about just thinking from my uh, font-minded perspective yeah. is that I've been really impressed with the work of the engraving mm. because. This is probably the hard, one of the hardest things to engrave, yes, right? True, Straight true, lines true, yeah. are very difficult with engraving because you're doing it all by hand and, I don't know, humans aren't good with straight lines. So it's, yeah. a real, um, it's a real special thing to make it work so well. Yeah, true, true that. I look forward to delivering these. All right. If you guys like the lighter cutter and you're interested in trying to buy one, um, we are making them available via an allocation lottery. This is kind of our thing. We just feel like it's a, it's a 
pretty fair way of letting everybody who's interested in one have a shot at getting one. Um, also, we are making 10 pieces, but it's not limited edition. Um, it's limited production. So, you know, if you don't get one this year and you're still interested next year, um, we should still be running it. Uh, so just apply again. All right, Hida-san, thank you so much for your My time pleasure. and thank for you. having us in your office today. Um, following this, actually, we're just gonna have a quick chat also with Kano-san and with Fujita-san uh, to get some of their thoughts about the letter cutter as we're making it. And thanks a lot, Elliot. This was such a pleasure to, to spend some time and do this crazy trip in Japan with you. Yeah, it's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. See ya. NHO あの、相談してやってみたんですけど、少しこの こういうこの外側のラインこれはその僕や日田さんは全然アイデアとしてはなかったところだったのでこれを作るっていうのはあの新たにその図面を動かさなきゃいけなかったんで結構まああのアイデアとしてはなかったんですごいそのチャレンジ
で V 字の形状なので浅く掘ると線が細く深く掘ると線は広くなりますでそうやって、えー、っと筆で書いたような文字だったらこう深く入れたり浅くしたりして文字を作っていくんですけれども今回えー、っと与えられたこのデザインのレターカッターというのはこう直線ほぼほぼ直線だけで構成されているあと深淵ですねが同じ太さで構成されているんですけれどもやっぱ人の手でこう直線を彫ってでそれをこう目で見た時にすごい直線と深淵というのはあらが目立ちやすいんですよ。なのでこう実際彫っていって刃物を進めていってであの均一の幅に均一の深さに彫り進めてるっていくっていうのが今回のレターカッターで一番難しかったところですね。でこう一つ嬉しかったのが僕が今から78年前にこうパリにこう勉強でこう横に行った時に建物にこの書いてある文字がすごい美しかったんですよ。でそれをこうあの写真で結構撮ってこうとあの保存してこう勉強用に使っていたんですけども今回彼があのマークがレターカッターをこうデザインしてでその歴史を語った時にこうまさにその建物とかにこうか文字を彫っている人の,その歴史とかっていうのにこうインスパイアを得てでこのデザイン文字をデザインしたっていうのを聞いてこう何かこう親近感みたいなのを覚えてすごい嬉しかったっていうのがサイドストーリーでありますね。まあそういう感じで掘りでいっています